What's up guys and welcome back to another Geeky Gecko creation video. Today I'm going to cover the topic of New Caledonian geckos that we often keep in captivity, specifically the gargoyle gecko as well as the crested gecko. So post any questions that you might have about the video below and without further ado, let's go. Alright guys, so what we have here is the gargoyle gecko, also known as the New Caledonian bumpy gecko. One of the reasons you might think they're called that is because of the bumpy ridges on their head, as seen here. The next thing these geckos are known for are their pattern. They typically come in two different patterns. One, being spotted or reticulated, and two, being striped. Now let's talk a little bit about the environment they come from. They come from an island right off the northeastern coast of Australia called New Caledonia. This leads to pretty consistent temperatures for them of about 85 degrees during the day and 75 at night, dropping all the way down to 75 degrees during their cool season and 65 at night. This leads to our next topic, humidity. As you can see based on the graph here, they have a pretty steady humidity of about 80% year round. And these stats were just taken from the 2019 roster. Lastly, let's talk about precipitation. In the wild, they receive rainfall about every three to six days throughout the year. This factors out to about one to two times a week. We can use this information to see how we can better care for them in captivity. I wanted to include a picture of their natural environment. I find that crested geckos like more fluffy, leafy foliage, while gargoyle geckos, though they do enjoy the cover, also enjoy to climb just a little bit more. So providing some extra branches or climbing stuff in their cage will definitely do them some good. So what you see happening here is me cleaning the cage from start. I first clean the cage with vinegar. Next. I use toilet paper or paper towels to just clean off all the water marks, dirt marks, feces, whatever might be on the glass or in the cracks to make sure the whole cage is perfectly clean. So now that you have a clean cage, what about substrate? Personally, I've never had a problem with ink running off of newspaper, so I like it. It recycles for the environment, holds humidity, and is readily available. There is one thing worth noting about gargoyle geckos, is that in the wild, they are predatory creatures. Therefore, in captivity, to replicate what they feel most comfortable in, it's nice to provide high, thick branches, lots of foliage and leaves, because this is how they hunt and feel most safe in the wild. I notice my gargoyle gecko likes to sit up higher, whereas my crested geckos a lot of times will just nap underneath the newspaper. One thing I wanted to point out is that these glass cages don't hold humidity so well, so using some saran wrap on top can help. So next we'll talk about food. First you want to make sure you use a clean bowl, so go ahead and get that accomplished. There's many different options you can have for gargoyle geckos. My favorite mix is the grubs and fruit because it provides a little bit higher balance of protein to sugar. And it's really popular amongst gargoyle gecko keepers. You mix it with a little bit of water in a dish just like this, add more water if need be, and just continue to stir until it is a thick consistency, kind of like ketchup. Make sure you provide a ground hide because they typically will use that. So I've strayed away from using egg crates in my crested and gargoyles geckos cages. I now use newspaper for foliage and cover and they seem to really enjoy it. Like I said, the ink doesn't run and so that's okay. Another good thing about the egg crates though is that it holds the size of the food bowls that are typically bought for crested and gargoyle geckos perfectly, as you can see here fits right in. 
So now that the cage is done, you can deliver the good news to your gecko and put him or her away and let them relax. All right, now let's move on to our second gecko, the crested gecko. Their scientific name actually means eyelash gecko, but because of the flaps of skin along the sides of their head, as shown, it almost resembles a crest, hence crested gecko. They also come in many different patterns and colors. This one is called harlequin, from the French word meaning mute and clown, <laughs> also known as a mime. This section will be broken down into two segments. One, how to set up a cage for an individual gecko, and two, how to set up a breeding group. This is a 25 quart tub that you can buy from Walmart. It's perfect for one adult crested gecko. Here, you see me lining the bottom with newspaper for substrate. One thing that you wanna do is drill a decent amount of holes all around the plastic tub, but not too many because you want the humidity high. So here you will see me providing one humid hide for the enclosure. I really like to give the females a humid hide because if I wind up separating them from the males later, they can still lay their eggs in that hide. I also use pool noodles from the dollar store to cut and then wedge between the plastic so the geckos can climb. And those leaves that you see, those are also from Walmart. Now you need some cover for the geckos to hide. Remember before I said I stopped using egg crates? I switched over now to newspaper. Remember the ink doesn't run and therefore it's just a nice way to recycle the paper and they actually really like to hide in between it. Now the last step is food. It's virtually the same as with the gargoyle gecko. Mix it to a consistency like ketchup, place it somewhere in the cage, and don't worry, they'll find it. And don't forget, give it a good spray before you put your gecko back. So this is Marge. She's one of our breeders here. She is a cream squared tiger Dalmatian. And because we have her breeding right now, we set her up in a bigger container, which I will now show you for groups. So this is a 56 quart tub from Walmart. I would recommend no more than one male and two to three females in this size cage. As you see, I use a little bit more newspaper and that's because the more animals that are living in tight quarters, you're gonna have more poop more urine and more moisture therefore the newspaper will do a good job of soaking that up add your decorations add some foliage and more newspaper for cover and you're pretty much good to go as you see i release her back here she gives a jump of approval and she's on her way what's up guys and thank you for tuning into this video thank you to all of you guys who are liking the videos subscribing uh, my videos are definitely beginning to gain a little bit more popularity and I thank you guys for that because I couldn't do it without you. I do put the information out there to be helpful, educational, and to continue pursuing this passion that I've had ever since I was younger. So enjoy some of this bonage footage, bonage footage, some of the geckos that we have around here, as well as some of the baby leopard geckos that we are beginning to have for sale. So if any interest you, just let me know. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, I'm always checking all of those platforms for comments or questions. So thank you guys, and until next time, have a geeky gecko great day.